How's it going YouTube? My name's Ryan and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to try to get a good picture of Saturn and I'm going to try to do that with my new Celestron telescope. And if you haven't seen it, last episode I made a video all about my current telescopes and how this telescope should be better. For example, it's a reflector type telescope so it shouldn't get that chromatic aberration that I talked about with my refractor type telescope. It's also a lot longer than my little refractor telescope, so I should get a more natural magnification, a greater magnification out of it. And it also has that very special equatorial mount that even my National Geographic don't have. It's actually designed to kind of follow the movement of the objects in the sky in relation to the Earth turning in a nice arc sort of style movement rather than trying to kind of go up, down, left and right that you'd have to uh, with a more kind of basic standardized mount. So this is so far my best picture of Saturn. Not really all that good, I had to kind of blow it up a lot in terms of um, the actual recording so you can see there's a lot of kind of pixelation going on. So I'll just see what I can get with this telescope. And I've kind of cheated, I've already used this telescope already. Uh, for example, I managed to get this pretty cool video of Jupiter going past. And you can kind of see it sort of slowly floating across uh, the camera there. But sadly, it's still kind of lacking in terms of detail, which I was pretty surprised about with this telescope. And as well as this, I found this really cool software package called Registax. And I've seen people like uh, Astro Biscuit, uh, I think uh, Astro Backyard, I think is another channel I've been watching, and a few others where what you can do is you can take your video, and I believe sometimes just a whole bunch of images, like from uh, Lucky Imaging, where you kind of take your best shots and put it in instead. But with this video, it will split it up into frames, and you can then kind of set points on the video that you want it to track. It will then track the moving object, uh, align all the frames, However it does it, I presume probably some sort of AI maybe, what it can do is it can kind of go through those frames and kind of pick out the ones you don't like and you can kind of set a limit so you want, I don't know, the best 30% uh, of the best frames and it'll discard the rest and it'll then stack them and once they're stacked you can kind of process the image more, you can make certain layers pop out more than others, you can tweak stuff like there's a cool uh, RGB align thing. That's how I got the color of Jupiter. Uh, it was all kind of uh, saturated in this white line. It must have somehow tweaked it somehow. I managed to process that um, video of Jupiter going past and produce this really cool image. But you can see, you know, we can see the bands, the color of Jupiter. We can see these sort of things, but it's still a little bit of an issue. Even though we can see this detail, that's because we kind of know where it is and we can kind of see through the blur oh yeah there's the bands of Jupiter but I want something better I want to get a big video of Jupiter something where the um, the software would actually have something to work with with having such a small Jupiter going past the software doesn't really have too much to analyze it doesn't really have much to work with but if I was to get a much bigger video um, or at least a video of a much sort of closer up view of Jupiter then there's a lot more it can kind of work with. Just kind of messing around, I got this video of, of um, the moon, and even though it's not perfect, I managed to kind of use this software, tweak around with it, and produce this image by taking the video of the moon and stacking the frames. So I plan to one, see if I can get a better Jupiter. Saturn, it's been uh, a little hard to get because it's it has been getting darker earlier in the evenings but by the time it's dark enough to see it and if there's no clouds in the way um, and I don't have lectures in the way um, Saturn's already kind of leaving where I'll be able to view it on campus so I think that's enough talking for now let's go down and see what we can get I might try film some stuff while I'm down there if not it will just be a bunch of shots of what I managed to get Okay, so not sure if you can see this. This one up here is Jupiter, and round about here behind those clouds is Saturn. 
so hopefully those clouds would start to go in a minute and we can show it so this is the laser collimator and you can see that red dot is pretty far off the target and if you see where it's pointing if we carefully look down here I managed to align it through the secondary mirror to point at the middle of the primary mirror at the back what we now need to do is use these adjustments to make it a line up up here It won't move while I'm using it. You can see some of the bands of Jupiter right there. So, <laughs> I think it's quite clear that uh, we didn't get Saturn tonight or I should say last night um, I don't know why maybe it was a light pollution thing I just couldn't pick it up on the telescope even on my refractor which I've got Saturn multiple times on in fact actually all of my Saturn pictures from the past um, up to now are on that telescope I couldn't find it Jupiter however I could I say one thing you get a really nice clear picture out of the telescope Though for some reason it's not as zoomed in um, compared to the other one as I thought it would be. One thing for sure, it's a very smooth telescope. It moves nice and smoothly. The focus on it, that is very smooth. Um, on the National Geographic, it feels kind of clunky. The same with the um, refractor. But this is nice and smooth movement. Um, so I can kind of tune the focusing right where I want and not have to kind of settle between two sort of big uh, like clicks as such. But the equatorial mount, I'm still a little bit confused by. Um, I found some tutorials, you know, I found the North Star and I did this and that. But for some reason, one of the locking nuts kept hitting um, another part of the telescope and I was pointing it. Um, I don't know why, I kind of just unscrewed it and yeah it worked fine I mean all I have to do is just kind of move just one axis as such and it will kind of follow Jupiter and I might have to correct it a little bit but yeah in general uh, it's very smooth now I'm not sure how much of the footage you saw um, there was people playing music there were like food delivery drivers parking up with the headlights on pointing at it um, completely ruining the whole uh, setup drowning it out with light and um, there was loads of people walking past um, my laptop was getting flat there was something going on with my webcam there was something going on with my sound <laughs> there was just all these things wanting to kind of go wrong but in the end I managed to get these shots of Jupiter and putting them through the software I managed to get this picture and you can see straight away it's definitely Jupiter not some random star and I'm starting to get some really clear photos and kind of playing around with the software I managed to improve this picture to now look like this and that's the first one and that's from that clear video of Jupiter kind of going past another thing I've noticed is that I have to manually change the exposure when recording it um, using the software I'm using I think it's called sharp cap for some reason when I select um, automatic for the exposure it kind of gives me something like this and as yeah, the software doesn't have a clue what to do with it it just becomes slightly clearer this so by kind of turning the exposure down I can actually start to see some of the you know, the bands and now of course I can put it through the software I can stack it and change the contrast and kind of get this nice image you can also tell that this um, image is also bigger, like Jupiter is bigger. Now it is somewhat cropped. This is from using my two times Barlow. 
and I did try to use the five times Barlow, but it just wasn't having it. I mean, the five times Barlow doesn't really do much on my other telescopes. Um, I, I keep seeing people say, don't bother going past three because a lot of telescopes don't really like it or it just, it just kind of goes bad. And one thing that was kind of annoying is that sometimes it looked like I was getting a little bit of chromatic aberration, which of course, you know, I hate. <laughs> it gives a nice effect. I've got a cool picture of the moon with that effect. But for some reason, when I take video from like, my refractor that has a lot of it and I put it in, um, to that software, even though I have that RGB align and all those other sort of tools that help try to correct the colour, it doesn't always seem to work. And I can only presume it kind of messes around and loses some of the colour detail when you kind of get this effect. But I can tell already that this is definitely my favourite telescope and compared to the National Geographic, it's so much better. And even though I prefer my own eyepieces, the eyepiece it comes with, or the eyepieces it comes with, it, it came with are actually pretty good I just can't understand how to use the little star find the little sight um, yeah I don't know I, I've, I mean I'm not quite sure how to look at it I've seen ones where you've got two pieces of glass both of a crosshair and when the two crosshairs are kind of meeting up you know you're looking at it straight it's not like that or like that and they're matched up this doesn't have that I mean, it looks like it's just like one piece of glass unless one piece is missing. So I'm kind of trying to look at it and I'm like, I'm not sure how to adjust it. With my other um, star finders, I kind of just find something in the telescope, um, like the moon or I don't know, a car park somewhere. And I can kind of adjust the star finder so the center of that crosshair is the same as what I see in the telescope. And it's normally about right. But this one, yeah, I need to watch some tutorials on this because I just don't understand it. But overall, I'm not going to do my final review yet. I want to see if I can get Saturn, uh, see the best I can get with the moon. Um, and I'll, I'm going to really put it through a test over a few weeks. But so far, yeah, it's a nice big telescope. It's very clear. It's very easy to set up. A nice heavy tripod so it doesn't move around as easily I love how it's got that little tray at the bottom so you can put all your stuff there and the whole thing just feels very professional at least to what I know compared to the other sort of beginner level stuff that I have this is definitely a lot better if I had to choose between this and the National Geographic I'll pick this uh, all day long even though um, on paper they seem to be somewhat similar you know the same sort of length and uh, diameter and all these sort of things yeah this is definitely um, the best telescope so far so stick around and uh, I guess hopefully next time we'll get Saturn <laughs> and soon I'll be filling up the website with pages with behind the scenes screen captures and uh, all other sort of things that I don't have long enough to uh, put into a video